Hey you guys, it's Nathan, Photoscape X and GIFs. How do you create a GIF? How do you edit a GIF? Uh, let's look at that today. So right here, I have a GIF that is a pre-made GIF and what's interesting about it, uh, besides the fact that it doesn't have a transparent background, um, if you pay for it, you could get it with a transparent background, but it's interesting um, just to demonstrate what a GIF is. Basically, we can hit play and it's just a nice little short animation, which it could be something funny, it could be something like emotional or memorable or different things to invoke, you know, the feeling or the message that's supposed to be brought across, but it's something that's easier than saying, oh, I need to uh, go into Adobe After Effects and make some big, huge, crazy graphic. It's only where with a series of, you know, maybe a couple dozen or even just one or two images, you can make something that might be a cool add-in to just pop into a video or to pop into whether you're sending a message to someone. But I think it's pretty cool. Let me show you a few other examples of GIFs. Uh, we have this one, which is kind of a random one. Uh, we have this one. Uh, let me just uh, pop back here. This one, which is literally just two frames. And what it is, is just thumbs up, like, and share. So if you guys enjoy this video, feel free to like and share. But uh, we also have this one here, which is to uh, smash the like button. So uh, you can do all of those things. But uh, the thing is you could put this into a video or into something to kind of encourage someone to engage in your post or into your content. So what's interesting is, you know, you can go to the Create tab in Photoscape X, you can drop it in and you can play it, you can see what it looks like, but how much editing control do you actually have in these images? Well, first, uh, the question is, how do I get maybe a specific frame out to the editor? Um, out to the editor where I'll be able to edit and work on that frame itself. So, uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, work with this one here. Uh, we're going to select all these throw them out, let's drag this in, and here we go. So what this is, is a subscribe button. You can hit play and you see that the cursor goes up, clicks on it, and then it says you're, uh, the subscribed. All right, so you have that and it looks really nice. Um, so it's also pretty simple, which I'm enjoying. So the thing is, how do you possibly get this to the editor? Well, what's awesome is that if you right click on the first or whichever image you want, you can right click on that frame and you can go to copy to clipboard. So when you hit copy to clipboard, you can send it straight to the editor. You can right click and say paste. And sure enough, you have that specific frame in your editor. At this point, you can make whatever edits or changes you want. You can use all the tools, everything that's normally in Photoscape X. And if you're not familiar with the tools, definitely check out my one hour beginner to expert where I run down so many of the tools and it's pretty exhaustive, uh, but uh, let's just go over to the color tab here and we're gonna look at a very simple thing that you could do, which is adjust the hue. So what you'll have to do is navigate down, hit more, and it has you know exposure, or gamma correction, brightness, you know, um, and all these different things, but you can go down to hue and you're able to slide it and it'll make some pretty drastic adjustments. Let me zoom in for you guys just so you can see it nice and clearly, the different colors. You can make this to be uh, maybe a blue, which is probably what we're gonna do today, but you could make it pretty much any other color you want in the spectrum here. And if you don't like how bright it is or how dark it is or vibrant or things, remember you can still adjust the brightness slider, you can adjust the darken uh, slider, things like that. You have full control. Um, so you can go and get it to where you want it to be. In this case, uh, we're just gonna get it to probably just a simple blue um, and I can do more adjustments in the future, of course, but I can go and hit apply. And there you have that image taken care of. Now, one thing I want to do here is when I go back to this redo, I want to kind of note, okay, so what I did was a negative, uh, 152 on the hue. I'm just going to hit uh, control C to copy that just in case if I decide to use it again and again. Uh, because in Photoscape X, it doesn't allow for bulk editing of GIF photos or a GIF uh, in general. And that's the challenging thing that kind of makes it a mixed bag in Photoscape X. It's a little bit rough. Uh, you don't have a ton of 
ability to edit in GIF as far as editing quickly. But let's say I was super thrilled with how this image turned out. Looks really nice. I can right click into here and I can go and hit uh, copy to clipboard. I can copy this and I could save it out if I wanted to, but copying the clipboard is gonna make it pretty simple. And then I go back here to the GIF. I can uh, right click and I can hit open from clipboard and it pastes that new image into my GIF. It pastes it at the very end, so I'd have to drag it uh, back to the beginning frames. If you've ever worked with like Photoshop or different things, um, and you work with like the different animations and things, you know sometimes it can be a headache. Oh, what's animating? What's doing this? But yeah, this is simply your timeline showing, okay, you're gonna start with this, and it's gonna go across. Uh, but what's nice is you have that one image done, and you could go and erase the original image, and you could work through all your different images. So if you really had to have it a certain color, you can. And I'm glad that there's at least that ability in there, um, as well as everything else that's in here, as well as, you know, um, removing, if you wanted to erase something, there's the eraser tool in the tools tab, and you can go and erase that cursor out of the image if you wanted to. Um, or you can go and insert, and you could insert uh, maybe an arrow into here. Uh, you could insert, you know, circles or squares or, you know, different shapes and different things in there. Whatever you'd like to do, you can do that, and you can make it for each individual image, and you can make it look pretty cool. Um, so uh, you could go and do all of these, which we're not doing that today. Uh, but let's look at some of the other tools uh, you're able to use. Uh, down here, uh, there is a show info button. And when you go to the show info button, this lets you, for that one frame, change the duration. So maybe you want that uh, blue to stick on for a full one second. You can do that all the way up to 30 seconds or as low as, you know, 0 0.01 seconds. So plenty of flexibility with the animation. There's also different transitions, which is slide up, slide down, and, you know, dissolve, zoom. There's a lot of different transitions you can do as well. Um, so definitely just try those out, see if you like them, but they do work fairly well. All right. So um, next you have remove, you have duplicate, you have copy to clipboard. Then down below you have some different things. You have rotate. Unfortunately, with the rotate, if you do tell it to rotate, so like rotate 90 degrees, you actually lose, um, you completely lose the transparency. And I've done this with a few different images. You lose the transparency every single time, and it's really annoying. There's also not a back button, and I really wish PhotoscapeX would fix that. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's pretty unfortunate. But like if I were to go back to this editor here, hit copy to clipboard, go back to the GIF and open from clipboard, I can go and paste it back in. Just know that if you're rotating, you're gonna end up with some trouble there. Uh, you can also do things like making it a black and white image and uh, that works pretty well. You have different things like negative or darken or deepen. It's just that after you select that, you actually have to, um, you're kind of stuck with it. You can't hit the back button. If you do mess it up, like um, you mess up the entire GIF there, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go select all and you'd have to go and re-put it back in. So it's pretty tough if you do make a mistake because there's not a lot of ways to go back. Now, one thing that's also tough is when you go to the save feature in here, um, you can save it as a one-time thing, a two-time, like how many times it loops, or you can have it loop forever. But what's unfortunate is that, you know, you save it out. It saves out as a GIF, um, but it's tough because, you know, you don't have like that project file. Yes, you can go back and you can see the individual frames and edit them, but you don't have that original file where you could say, oh, here's my cursor and it's being adjusted a little bit in this frame. It's just stagnant frames and that's what makes it kind of tough because you don't have a huge amount of uh, control over what you're doing. You also don't have like uh, different things where you could say, oh yeah, this image needs to be dragged up here over the next 10 frames. Uh, no, you'd actually have to do each movement every single frame and you'd have to make it look good because if it doesn't look natural and smooth, you're gonna end up with some trouble as well. So movements and stuff would look pretty tough. I could definitely see something simple like this like and share one, which is these two colors. It goes from one to the other and things like that. And you know, you can go and change the duration. So like over here on the right hand side, it's nice because you can do 
duration just for one or like just for what's selected or you can apply it to all so you could say oh yeah actually change it only every half a second so then it's not changing as quickly every half a second hit apply and then it changes but it doesn't change too quickly so that's nice that there's that um, there's the transitions again there's a different size if you want to resize it to a smaller size or if even if you want to do a larger size you can do that as well and there's a place over here where you can type text uh, so you can just type something like a test or maybe you could just put like um, maybe if you wanted to put your name in there if you were just trying to like oh here's a watermark just in case if somebody was trying to steal that gif you could take that off uh, you could put it on and then they wouldn't be able to take it off uh, later um, but you only have a certain amount of control you can't like just like put that wherever you want you can do like the top down left right you know those different things you can change the size of it uh, but you don't get like control to like move and shift it around a lot so that's unfortunate it's something where i don't think photoscape x has spent a huge amount of time with their gif um tab to really make it what it could be um, i think a lot of people are using this software to simply edit photos and to add tags and manipulate things like that. I don't think they're doing a ton with GIF, and I think that's why they haven't put a lot of time into making it a super incredible um, GIF creator. Um, so uh, that's kind of the long and short of it, you guys. It's unfortunate that Photoscape X doesn't allow more freedom. Um, if you are trying to make a change, like you wanted to make it like that blue or something, and you need to do every single uh, frame, You'd have to uh, say, oh, yeah, I'm done with this one. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to copy this one to clipboard. Now I'm going to drop this one into the editor. And, you know, it's going to take you, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes to do this one GIF. Now, if you use it for every single video that you're ever going to use, it's worth it. It's worth your time uh, for sure. But it's something where it's not practical if you're doing this day in and day out of making stuff for people uh, it's probably not going to be the easiest thing to do but if you are trying to do that the one shortcut that i would encourage you guys to use is if it's just a simple change in hue like i was saying you can just uh, go and hit copy uh, to what that setting was like it was a negative 100 something i can go and hit paste and uh, you can paste that in for that what, like 123 and you can get to that color so at least the color will be the same every single time you go and you make that adjustment and change. If you're doing a lot of adjustments and you know they're going to be the same for every single frame in that GIF, what you can do is go over here to Macros in the Edit tab in this quick menu setting. You can go and hit, oh yeah, I want to uh, create a Micros. And I would say, okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go down here to the hue. I'm going to paste in what it is. I'm going to hit Apply. And then you can say, oh, yeah, save that micro, save that change that I made. And I'm going to hit save. I'm going to do this for GIF. And then when I drop that next image back, I can say, oh, yeah, for this one, uh, when I go and I drop it into the editor, I can say, oh, yeah, play that micro. I can hit play that GIF micro and color. Boom, you're done. It's still going to be manual. It's still going to take a lot of time. So unfortunately, uh, GIF isn't something that's super easy in Photoscape X, but that's what it is and what we have to use. If there's any other software you guys would like me to take a look at to uh, continue showing like, oh, what might be another good alternative to make GIFs with, uh, definitely let me know. But I hope this was helpful so you guys can have a reasonable expectation when you're working with GIFs. Um, it's definitely an interesting thing. It's something I want to do more with. But for now, uh, Photoscape X just isn't the best alternative uh, or the best uh, software, I think, to make GIFs um, if you're going to be making them a lot. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.